Okay, welcome back to part two. So in the last part, I showed you why does the concentration of why, why the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere matters so much. Uh, now I want to tell you about how we stop emitting CO2. So th this uh, chart shows the typical carbon dioxide emission, the, the carbon dioxide emissions from a typical family in the UK. Uh, and so the, along the bottom here, it's kilograms. So uh, this one here says it's 2,700 kilograms. That's heating. 2,700 kilograms is 2.7 tons. 2.7 tons of emissions associated with heating. How on earth can that be? That's a massive amount. That's, that's just an incredible amount of uh, carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere. And so here's transport, uh, electricity, aviation, it's a ton, diet and agriculture, waste. So these on these different categories, you can see these are tons, that's 2.3 tons and so on. And if in 2050 we want to have net zero as a country, we need to do that. So let's just go back, there we go, and boom, boom, boom. How on earth are we going to do that? Well, many of these solutions uh, are on the way. Uh, transport, everything is going to be electric, uh, for sure. Uh, but the things I want to talk to you about are, are heating and electricity. I want to show you how you can do things right now that will reduce your carbon dioxide emissions. Um, so first of all, how do those emissions arise? Uh, well, they arise from burning fossil fuels. So the energy to our homes uh, comes from a gas called methane and we go out in the sea and we drill down and uh, the methane is trapped there from decayed uh, plant matter and uh, it flows into pipes and it's pressurized and we send it to power stations and the power stations burn it with this reaction methane plus oxygen gives co2 and h2o and out comes some emissions at the power station uh, and we they burn it and use the hot gases to spin turbines and send electricity to our homes but we also send the gas directly to our homes where we burn it we do the same reaction here and we emit carbon dioxide directly at our homes. Now into this mix as well, we also have renewables uh, which generate electricity without emitting any carbon dioxide at all. So that's absolutely fantastic. So uh, there go the emissions from the power station, emissions from the home, but nothing from here. So the CO2 emissions from a typical home. So uh, when we use gas, uh, typically we emit about 0.23 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions from gas. Uh, the exact way this number is derived is uh, ask about it if you're interested. And similarly, by chance in the year 2022, we're emitting about a very similar number of carbon dioxide emissions per of kilo, similar number of kilograms of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour of electricity. This is a measure of the energy. Uh, so the one energy from gas and energy from electricity, at the moment we get about the same emissions from each one. So typically a tap family home will use 2,900 kilowatts of electricity, makes three, two thirds of a ton, 667 kilograms of CO2, and 12,000 kilowatt hours of heating makes about 2.7 tons of uh, emissions. So together, that's three and a half tons. And probably you have no uh, no direct experience of emitting anything at all from anything you do. Uh, so it's quite astonishing. That's one of the reasons why it's so easy to do. So what can we do? Well, the plan, the national plan, involves building massively more renewable energy. And as we have more, more energy, the amount of gas we need will shrink down and the emissions will shrink down too. Uh, and so the, here's the plan, loads of renewable generation. We need to stop burning stuff. And that means we won't stop immediately. We just burn less and then less and then less and then less. And we need to electrify everything we do because renewables can make electricity directly that's clean. So we are making progress. This graph shows the carbon intensity of the electricity that we use. So for every kilowatt hour of electricity we use, back in 2005, we needed to emit about 
500 grams, half a kilogram for every unit of electricity. But because we've added renewables onto the grid, it's come right down now. Uh, and now here's this figure about 230, 2022, it's about 230 uh, grams of carbon dioxide for every kilowatt hour of electricity. So the question is, that's the big plan. What can we do personally? So the first thing to say is uh, most people can't do anything. <laughs> most people don't have uh, much in the way of savings uh, and don't have much that they can do. But what everybody can do is they can talk to other people. Don't let things go unsaid. If you've watched the first part and seen how serious the situation is, uh, Talk to people about it. Tell them you're worried. Tell your children that you're concerned about it. Tell your parents, children, tell your parents that you're concerned about it. You want them to do something. Kids, you know, you used to pester your kids to get some, pester your parents to get some toy at Christmas. Pester them to save some carbon dioxide in order to leave, <laughs> leave the planet decent <laughs> for, for you. Uh, uh, so most, but so talking to people, keeping it in the, the national conversation. If somebody goes abroad, maybe they fly to America. Uh, talk about the carbon dioxide. Oh, you've you've emitted a ton of carbon dioxide. Just mention it. You don't have to stop being friends with people, but yeah, it's a reality. Not mentioning this uh, atrocity we're doing is just. Well, it's being silent in the face of an absolute disaster. But if you do have the resources, uh, I want you to get busy and start spending money. It's very complicated. Anyway, what does a low emission home look like? Uh, well, it's well insulated. So the first thing to do, which costs almost nothing, and you just do it anyway, is eliminate drafts in your home. If you've got windows that are leaking, uh, either get new windows or block up the uh, the what you've got. It's just the first thing to do. If you have proper glazing, it makes a big difference to a home. It stops cold corners. And it, it it it's glazing typically needs to be replaced. Uh, uh, you know, sometime between twenty and fifty years, you you need to put in new windows. Uh, Put in some good ones and uh, if you can put in external wall insulation uh, doesn't suit every property but almost every property can benefit from it if you've got a fancy property with a nice front you can typically put stuff around the sides or on the back which is actually as ugly ugly as sin usually and then you can generate your own electricity with solar volt photovoltaic panels uh, and then uh, you can uh, get a battery and store your own electricity and then you can run at night in the summer, you can run night and day off solar power. And then when you heat, heat with a heat pump. Don't heat with a gas boiler. So I want to talk about some of these. Uh, now, I, I, don't, I don't have time to talk about them all. So first of all, I want to talk about heat pumps. Uh, so I need to go, uh, will it do it anyway? Oh, there we go, there we go, heat pumps. So much is said about heat pumps. First of all, how do they work? Uh, so it, they work in a different way from normal heating. So here's an electrical heater, you put in electrical energy and you get heat out. And all electrical heaters are 100% efficient. That's really fantastic. Uh, and with gas boilers, they're not so good. Uh, you put in chemical energy and you get out heat. Uh, and with a modern boiler, you might get 90% efficiency. But if your boiler's more than 10 years old, you're probably getting 75% efficiency or if you've turned up the, the flow temperature on your boiler to 70 celsius or if you've left it where it was set at 70 celsius it's going to be very low efficiency which is quite astonishing really we go out into the oceans uh, build these oil rigs and uh, gas collection rigs uh, bring the gas hundreds even thousands of miles uh, to our homes and then we burn it and we throw away 25% of the energy. <laughs> oh, crazy. But a heat pump works differently. 
Now you do have a heat pump in your home. So a lot of people think heat pumps don't work, actually. A lot of people think it's a scam or some kind of thing. You get articles in the Daily Mail about it. Uh, but uh, most people have a fridge in their home and that's a heat pump. Uh, so what it is, a, a fridge is an insulated box uh, and it has a heat pump, uh, a little heat pump around the back. And the heat pump doesn't make heat, it moves heat. It takes heat, it uses electricity, and then it takes heat from inside, which you want to be cold, and moves it outside. Uh, and typically in the freezer, you can go down to minus 20 Celsius quite easily. And outside, uh, the outside of the fridge gets hot, typically 30 Celsius. So what the heat pump is doing is moving heat from inside to outside. Now, when we're talking about uh, heat pumps in a domestic heating arrangement, what we do is instead of concentrating on this cold uh, and how cold it can get, we concentrate on, on the hot bit. So what we do is we put the insulation around the hot bit and we take it away from around the, the cold bit. It's still the same heat pump. It's still doing the same thing. Uh, but now we put this cold bit outside our house and this is our house, except it's not 30. It's we only want it to go to 12, 20 and it's typically zero on a very cold day outside. So what heat pumps are doing, exactly what they've been doing in refrigerators for years, uh, it's just that the cold bit is now outside. We take heat out of the cold air, making it colder, and bring it inside and to warm our homes. And we can take heat from the air or the ground outside, and we can heat the air uh, in our homes directly, or we can heat water and send water around our homes. So the different types of heat pumps, air to air, air to water, ground to water, and so on. But the thing that they all share is that they move heat. So when we use one kilowatt of renewable electricity, and remember this is precious stuff still, we don't have enough of it, uh, and we can move two kilowatts of heat and, and get three kilowatts out as heat altogether. That's a, totally astonishing. Now this ratio of this number, the heat you get out to the electricity you put in, is called the coefficient of performance or, it's, or efficiency. And typically, heat pumps are 300% efficient. They've got more and more efficient every year as people get better at it, but 300% efficient. That's fantastic. Why does it matter? Because if we want to heat our homes uh, with renewable electricity, if we use a heat pump rather than an electrical heater, we only need one third the amount of renewable electricity. We need one third the amount of wind farms, one third the amount of solar, one third the amount of nuclear, these low carbon sources. And that makes a massive difference. So if we heat with heat pumps, uh, we only need one third of electricity on the grid. Um, so here, here's a heat pump. Uh, I've got whole videos about heat pumps, but I'll just uh, say again, uh, in case people haven't seen, that basically you put electricity in, and cold water in and out comes hot water. That, that, that's all there is to it. Then it replaces a gas boiler, uh, supplies hot water and heats radiators. And what? how does it work? It's basically a pipe, literally a pipe, uh, and inside it is a working fluid. Uh, that working fluid is uh, a bit like uh, butane, uh, lighter fuel. Uh, in mine, it's uh, got propane in, uh, and uh, there's a compressor and a expansion valve. But when the you, when you compress this working fluid that's part vapor and part liquid, when you compress it, it gets hot. Uh, and then when you expand it, it gets cold. So this is the trick that's worked. I'll change the color to show that there. So here we've got the working fluid just goes round and round and round. And here it gets hot and here it gets cold. Uh, and so the trick what we do is we make a very, very long pipe uh, and we, as it expands here, the working fluid gets very, very cold uh, and we blow air over this very, very long pipe. So this is outside and we're sucking air outside. So the air flows over it and the air cools down. So we take, cool it down by three or four degrees typically. And the heat from that flows into the working fluid uh, which is still cold but when we compress it it gets hot and we then uh, so look so outside here the working fluid is about minus 20 something like that so that's 
much colder than the air is so heat flows from the air into the working fluid we then compress it and now it gets hot and we now flow water that we want to get hot past this hot working fluid and they exchange heat and out comes hot water that's how it works so look if you look here uh, so, so here's the working fluid is hotter than the water so overall we've transferred heat from the air to the water the working fluid just keeps going round and round and round uh, just doesn't get used up in any way so that's an air to water heat pump so here's the inside here's the fan that goes round and it sucks air through and if we look at this uh, this is lots of little metal fins all very close together and if we look at it here you can see all the metal fins close together and here's the pipe that's carrying the refrigerant it weaves backwards and forwards and so as the air blows over it it captures the heat from the air uh, and so it works around like this and then the hot water goes into radiators and so on and so here's the magic of it it's the most carbon you can save from what you're doing in, for most people. So this is the typical amount of gas that people burn. So with 90% efficiency, you get 10,800 kilowatt hours of heat. And in terms of emissions, that amounts to 2.8 tonnes per year. So using electricity, uh, we need to generate this much amount of heat. But... Uh, in my house the the efficiency of the heat pump over a year is 3.5 3 350 percent so we only need 3086 kilowatt hours of electricity uh, which has emissions of only 0.7 tons so that's a 75 percent reduction in carbon emissions from heating your house no change in your comfort no change in anything just fantastic uh, and so you, if we look back at this graph showing how the amount of carbon dioxide emitted per unit of electricity has changed over the years, over here in 2030, the target is to reach 100 grams of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour of electricity. We're currently at 230 here. Uh, and when we reach that, it will represent a 90% reduction in uh, carbon emissions by 2030, which is absolutely phenomenal, makes a massive difference. So we're going from 3.4 tonnes here, installing a heat pump, we get rid of that and uh, here we come we're using electricity now, uh, only 700 kilos uh, and we're only emitting 1.4 tonnes of carbon dioxide. So here we are back with our house, so having a low carbon uh, heat pump is, makes a massive difference to the amount of carbon we emit. But you can also get electricity for free. So uh, if you, you take a piece of silicon and you do some physics magic with it, you can make it so that when light falls on it, you get a little electric current. So we put little bits of metal on the top and bottom here and uh, it makes a, a voltage of about 0.6 volts. So we put a few of these together. So there's one and we connect the top of one onto the bottom of another and then the top of one onto the bottom of another and each one generates 0.6 volts. And so we begin to add up these voltages to make something useful. So in this, this shows one bit of silicon here. This is one bit here. And you can see it's got metal over the top. It can't be everywhere over the top, otherwise the sunlight wouldn't get in. Uh, and then the, these connections from the top go to the bottom of the next little bit of silicon. And they get put together uh, like this. Whoa, so you have one road makes six volts, uh, put together like that, makes 12 and so on, all the way up, Typ a typical panel that will go on your roof will generate uh, 36 volts, between 36 and 40 volts, something like that. So uh, on your roof, you've got these panels and they make a big voltage, 200, 200 volts. So you can turn that into AC and use it. And this solar energy is the cheapest source of energy in human history. And it's still getting cheaper. It's absolutely phenomenal. And if you've got a roof, you can stick solar panels on it and get free electricity. It's, it's absolutely wonderful thing. So on, on our house, uh, we, well, well, we generate about 3,500 units of electricity a year. 
So uh, we can take this, so, so put in some solar panels, uh, and uh, now, so 3,000 kilowatt hours a year for a typical system, and, and look, that, that's all the electricity we use. So we can just get rid of that. Fantastic. So we're down to 0.7 tons, and we were up at, I think it was three and a half tons or something. So these steps, these are things you can buy and do which reduce your carbon dioxide emissions. And then the last thing is to think about batteries. Now, batteries don't actually reduce your carbon dioxide emissions, but they save you a shed load of money. <laughs> so here's me with my battery. Uh, it's equivalent to about 4,500 AA batteries. It stores 13 and a half units of electricity. Uh, and it's very complicated. It's got bits for converting DC to AC. It's got a brain and it's on the internet and it. Uh, it has a battery and it works out what to do at any particular time. So when it's the sun shining, it uses the sunshine to uh, run the home. And if there's any extra, it, then it charges the battery. And if the battery is full, it sends it to the grid. Uh, and at night, well, uh, let me show you. This is uh, a day in winter using solar power and a battery. So this is our consumption. So this is zero to 24 hours. That's the same for all these graphs. And this is the power in kilowatts, one, two, three, four. And this is showing we're using on average about one kilowatt through the day. Uh, and we consumed about 20.8 kilowatt hours. Uh, and so that's most of that is the heat pump or a good half of that is the heat pump. Uh, you, you, you can see uh, here's the kettle uh, dishwasher, maybe, I don't know, a washing machine or something. Uh, and uh, the solar panels generated three and a half units. So that's uh, almost 15 percent of our electricity came from the sun, even on the 27th of January. Uh, uh, but most of it came because we bought electricity in the middle of the night. We filled up the battery uh, and then. So here's zero. So the power is going into the battery here. Then we're running off the battery. Then when the solar comes, look, the battery is recharging a little bit, even even in January. And then in the evening, we're running off the battery and then the battery ran out here and we had to buy some full price electricity. Uh, so this is showing where the electricity comes from the grid. So the grid is uh, producing. We're buying electricity off the grid. But this electricity just cost a few pence per kilowatt hour. Uh, very, very cheap. Uh, and then at the end, we have, at the end of the day, we have to buy some full price electricity. But in summer, it's a completely different case. Now look at the average uh, uh, use. We're down at uh, a few hundred watts on average. Uh, here's boiling the kettle and dishwasher, running the heat pump for hot water. Uh, so a typical day, we consume just 11.6 units. Uh, but look, the sun, this is 22nd of June. Massive amounts of sun, 26 kilowatt hours of, sun, of uh, solar generated. Uh, and so we were running off the battery at night, then we uh, uh, running off sunshine uh, and then we're charging the battery. The battery is full now uh, and we just run off the battery when it gets dark at night. Uh, and here's the energy from the grid. Nothing. We don't use any energy from the grid for 100 this year for 142 days. We didn't draw any energy from the grid. That's four and a half months. But we did contribute energy to the grid. So we're helping provide energy to the grid. And why this sort of stuff matters is this shows the daily generation from through the month of May to June. Uh, and the blue here is the gas. The pink and the yellow is our renewable generation. The yellow is sunshine and the pink is uh, wind farms. Uh, and these peaks here are where the dirtiest gas generators uh, are switched on. That's where it's most expensive to make electricity. Uh, and what we can do is using a battery, you can switch the time of day that you take electricity from the grid and you can avoid these peak dirty times. So it doesn't actually reduce carbon dioxide emissions, but it will save you a lot of money. So here are three things I could talk more. I could talk all day about all these things. Uh, but these are three things that you can do if you've got the resources. So here's the summary. We need to stop emitting CO2 if we want the Earth to stop warming. 
whatever you do, talk with your friends. Don't stay silent. Uh, if you've got the resources, installing a heat pump can reduce your CO2 emissions by tons. It's hard to believe it, but with a gas boiler, literally tons of gas is coming out of your the flue of your boiler every year. Absolutely astonishing. And you probably have no consciousness of it at all. Installing solar PV gives you free electricity. What's not to like? And if you team it up with a battery, it will save you lots of money. So uh, you can email me. Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I have a website, Protons for Breakfast. Uh, lots of questions there that you might think about asking, uh, but I'm going to stop right there. Thank you very much.